r slash ask reddit what's your slightly illegal life hack see hub it's a website that allows you to get access to basically any academic paper without paying for access to them it's amazing i used to work as a lawyer in the criminal courts here in ireland at the time parking was very difficult but the largest police station in Ireland was adjacent to the district courts there. The criminal courts have moved since but at the time they were at the Brightwell. Anyway outside that station there were loads of parking spaces. All marked police only. One day I was running late and decided I would take the ticket rather than be late for court so I parked in one. No ticket. I started doing it regularly. Pretty soon they were used to my car there so I guess they all assumed it belonged to a policeman. It was great, even if I got a ticket I had saved multiples of the ticket cost by the time a few weeks had gone by. Several months later it finally caught up with me. I was starting the car getting ready to pull out when a cop held up his arm. Damn. I thought, and wound down the window. He said good evening judge and stopped oncoming traffic to let me go. I said thanks very much and drove on. Thing is I was in my early 20s, way too young to possibly be a judge in Ireland. Where 40s would be young for that job. I think the cops collectively decided that anyone with the audacity to blatantly park in that space must be a judge. Who else would think they could get away with it? Saved me probably 10,000. At a time early in my career when I really needed the money. Once I was established in the spot I would pull into it right in front of cops and nonchalantly get out and walk away. Nobody challenged me. Long story short. If you break the law blatantly the cops may decide not to challenge you. Sometimes I have to park downtown for work. Parking for an entire day cost $35. But when you hit the lost ticket button. It's only $25. So you bet your ass I lost my ticket each time. My co-worker and I swap out passes for the parking lot at the hospital we work at. She comes on days and I'm on nights. So we just give the other person the newer pass and you only have to pay $2.25 or $4.50 rather than $14.25 for the whole day. At the end of the run of shifts, the last person just pays for a lost ticket. $14.25. I've been on the waitlist for parking for over 3 years, and this has saved me hundreds of dollars. When I was running low on food, I would eat the free breakfast at the hotel 2 minutes from my apartment. Never break 2 laws at once. If you're speeding, don't look at your phone. I look for PDF files of textbooks before buying them. I am a college football fan and I park downtown right in front of the stadium. The max time won the meter is 2 hours but I still park there. I get a $15 ticket every time but the paid parking lots are $25.30. I just pay the ticket and smile as I see people that pay double and walk a mile. I order the club sandwich. And I'm not even a member. I don't know how I get away with it. This one isn't really illegal. But if you go to Dunkin Donuts about 30 minutes before closing time, they will give you all their leftover donuts if you ask. If you don't, they just throw them away. Don't ask for totally free donuts. Ask for two donuts. Pay for them and then ask is there anything you're looking to get rid of, and the employee will make you a dozen for free. But if you walk in asking for free food, that doesn't go over as well. If you want to buy a car that doesn't have a title, First make sure it's not stolen, then register it online in the state of Vermont and they will make you a new title and send it to you without needing to inspect it. I go the reddit stream pages for any sports event I want to watch, since it would be the only reason to pay for cable. I once was invited to the executive lounge at a hotel about 5 minutes from my place. They serve free wine and finger food there, literally no security or room checking or anything. I go there sometimes after work when I feel like a glass or two by myself. The washing machines in my dorm have a payment system that uses your student it instead of change for more convenient washing. But if you unplug the ethernet cable on the box you swipe your card and it doesn't charge you when it's connected again. Thanks for the tip. Never have tried it, but put the address you want the letter to go to in the return address spot and then don't put a stamp on the envelope. It's really stupid to risk federal crime for less than 50 cents. But I think this fits this thread. As a male lady, 
I would draw a smiley face where the stamp goes and put it back in your mailbox to be nice, so it's not delayed another day going through the system and getting returned to sender. I'm sorry if I'm your mail lady, put it in a blue collection box, then it'll work for sure. I study and work at a university where I often park in the paid parking lots where you get a ticket printed at the time of arrival and then feedback in when you leave to calculate your total. I found that if you crumple up the ticket the machine can't read it and then I call the helpline and tell them my ticket is unreadable and they immediately open the gate. I haven't had to pay for on campus parking all year. I play the stupid foreigner card if I am caught jaywalking. I was nearly 18 before I realized crossing the road was a crime in some countries. In the UK we just look both ways and go for it. Foxtel, Australia's cable TV provider gives free 2 week trials. You download their app and can Chromecast to your TV. For about 8 months I've been creating a new Gmail address and resetting an old iPad. Yes it's a tiny hassle. But I already pay around $130 per month for two satellite boxes and that package doesn't have Chromecast functionality. Not me but I have a friend who pays for one movie then finds every good movie that's playing, times everything, and watches something like 3 or 4 movies in a day. We used to take our dog to day camp at PetSmart. It was good because he would get to play with other dogs during the day. It was expensive though. $20 a day. Only did it twice a week but still $160 a month. They used to send us digital coupons for a free day for every 10 days we went. Well I tried to use the same digital coupon and it worked for a while. Didn't abuse it or do it every time we went as not to raise suspicion. Eventually they updated the computer system to recognize if the coupon had been used before. Good run while it lasted. Gym at the university is like a $300 membership for 6 months but I've realized that they don't scan your card if you go up to the women's gym. So I've been using my old card to get the access card for the women's gym. I have 2 cards from the gym. So if I ever do get caught I'll pretend I brought the wrong one in. It's probably not a good thing to do but as a broke uni student I have no remorse. Keep getting Amazon Prime by creating new emails every month and signing up for the free trial. I will not reply because cops surf these pages. Warning warning warning. Okay okay. I share Spotify with my girlfriend and I have Spotify premium. I'm calling the police. You can claim up to $300 worth of non-cash donation money every year on taxes without a receipt. An example would be you'd say you donated $250 worth of clothes. If a website disables your ability to right-click save their media in order to protect it you can usually grab it easily enough by opening the page info in your browser and going to the media tab. Maybe called something else depending on browser used, and there should be a list of all media embedded on a page, pictures, videos, and so on. If a website has a pop-up asking you to disable your ad blocker or to sign up for the site, right-click the item and choose inspect element. As you highlight each line and the code the elements that make up that pop-up will turn blue. Delete each element that makes up the pop-up and then close the inspect element screen and you can view that page. You can stream almost any TV show or movie without paying for it just by looking for free sites. They are always shutting down and popping back up at new addresses. Just follow 123 movies on Twitter. Updated a neighbor's unsecured Wi-Fi router with a third party firmware that increased the output so I could steal even more of their internet. I used it for the entire year I was at that address. I had free internet for roughly 2 years. Moved into a new apartment and had called Comcast to have internet set up. When the technician pulled up, I literally watched him get out of his truck, write some shit down, then got back in and left, so they typed it up as me not being home for the installation. Well as it turned out, I had my own router and modem already hooked up, and they turned everything on at their end, but they forgot to turn that shit off. Two freaking years. 50 MBS internet. Not a single phone call from Comcast, or a single bill delivered to my door. I had a small burn and went to buy burn cream at Walmart for it. I realized before I bought the cream that Walmart sells aloe vera plants. I broke part of one off and applied it to the burn and I was all good. Colon. As a broke college kid, go to Costco through the return entrance and keep walking to the cafe. Cheap pizza, salad, hot dog, etc. 
At the grocery store I fill up the $9.99 make your own 6 packs with Dogfish Head 90 which generally sells for $11.99 a 4 pack. Never been caught. If you go into a 7 stroke 11 at 4am and bring a gun you almost always get all the money in the drawer and a free pack of gummy bears or Swedish berries. Or both. There's a website that lists the torrent files of TV shows by episodes and provides a custom RSS feed. Hypothetically, one could set that up in a torrent client that supports RSS. Then write a small script that runs the completed downloads through another piece of software that renames things into a proper file format and stores them in a folder structure. If you did that and installed a media server like Plex that used those directory, you could hypothetically have free television episodes the day after they air. All lined up in a Netflix-like interface with no effort. If you do this, let me know how you got the scheduled task to run properly with the renamed because mine still doesn't like it. Bought a good quality steam mop from a store but didn't take the warranty. 6 weeks in and it stopped working. I went back and they refused to take it back without a store warranty so I took it home and cleaned it. Went to the same store in another town it's a huge chain. I bought the same mop switched it out of the box. Went back in and said my wife had just bought the same product in their sister store and got an instant refund. I turned my unused satellite dish into a Wi-Fi antenna strong enough to steal a neighbor's unlocked Wi-Fi. Don't know about other places, but in Australia we have serve serve checkouts at supermarkets. That's a checkout that has no human and your honesty is between you and the machine. Sometimes I put the most expensive dragon fruit, $15 per kilogram, on the scale and select red apples from the list, $2.99 per kilogram. I'll be in prison one day. If you drive a common car or SUV, and you need new tires or have a part that is worn out or about to break, go rent a similar make model and switch stuff out. I know a guy that did this with her entire transmission. Just get the insurance and push the car down the block from your garage and call a tow when the work is done. <laughs> Making a bunch of fake emails to have multiple free trials on an app. Whoa, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.